um, my story and kind of how my path goes is I was always good enough at school. And so, you know, to be honest, was taking as few courses as I needed, um, reading as few books as I, as, I, as I could. And it wasn't until second semester senior year where I took my first marketing course. And that's the first time where I was in school and like I wanted to be good. I wanted to buy the books. I wanted to know everything. I was coming home and analyzing commercials and trying to break down the strategy. And so it was the first time that like a light had gone off inside of me and I believe the job is to follow that light and so at that time I'm like okay I want to do marketing um, I look up marketing jobs the top jobs are all CMOs and most of them have MBAs so I decided at that point in time 21 years old that I want to go to business school to get my MBA average age graduates from business school at 28 I'm 21 feels like too long of a journey given that I already know what I'm going to do um, fortunate or unfortunate enough this is 20, 2020 uh, sorry 2001 2002 coming kind of out of like that dot-com bubble a lot of jobs disappeared so I lost my summer internship as a full-time job which gave me a second to sit back and rethink um, I ended up taking a job at Fuqua School of Business which is Duke's business school and the strategy there was I could start taking courses early, right? I could sit in the back of classrooms and gain knowledge. Um, and I also could build even better relationships with the people in admissions and figure out how to get into business school young. And so instead of waiting until I was 26, I was able to go to business school 22, 23. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. What, what year did you graduate? Uh, 2000. I went in 2004, graduated in 2006. So you, you, you're about, you're about what, 25 years old? 25, exactly. Okay, good. First job out of um, Stanford? Uh, global marketing. So again, I'm on the CMO path. You know, at Stanford, they had also opened my eyes to this entrepreneurship thing. So I'm definitely entrepreneurship and marketing at the time. I take a job doing global marketing at Johnson & Johnson. Super dope. Traveling everywhere from Colombia to Brussels to um, Portugal to Spain. I'm training doctors how to use our products, which are essentially products that make you stop bleeding during surgery. So I'm watching neurosurgery. I'm watching liposuction, all of that stuff. Um, the experience was amazing, but I realized I was building a ton of knowledge in a space that was not super interesting to me. So I was building knowledge in a healthcare space and I needed to learn biology and none of that stuff was setting my soul on fire. Um, and so at that point in time, I just kind of made a decision that um, I wanted to move to the advertising side of the business that uh, as a marketer, these ad people were bringing us ideas and my job was to be a good filter. Not those 10, these three ideas and that's what goes to the CEO to make a decision. Well, I wanted to be on the side of the people who are actually doing the ideation, who are actually doing the strategic thinking, who are actually doing that work. And so after a while, I made the decision to jump out and head to the agency side. Before we go there, you yeah. just said something I want to go back to. Yeah. You said it wasn't setting your soul on fire, number one. Yeah. yeah. While yeah. at Johnson & Johnson, that is a great name. That, that's great yeah. to have on your resume. Were you making good money at the time? Yes, so I was making, it was my first time making six figures. I went into business school making $30,000 a year, mm -hmm. came out of J&J making 100K. So Beautiful. Um, I was making real money for the first time in my life. Beautiful. I want to touch on these points for a second because people get locked into I'm making great money. Yeah. I work for this amazing company and I'm on a, a, a career trajectory to move up and do big things. Yeah. You, you noticed early on, all of this is great. I'm traveling the world. I'm going to all of these exotic destinations. Absolutely. But it's not setting my soul on fire. That's right. How important is it for you to have passion, not just money, yeah. but passion yeah. about what you do every day? Yeah. I mean, I think so. First of all, let me say that um, I think it's supreme of supreme importance. And again, I think the job is you start out really wide saying, oh, I want to do marketing. And there's no way for you to really know what you want to do. And so over time, you get tighter and tighter on that brief, right? You figure out how to do more and more of what you love and less and less of what you hate. And for me, the formula is simply my gifts and my talents that God has put in me times those spacious spaces where I'm passionate and willing to earn a check for them. Because some of these places where you're passionate, you don't want to earn a check for it, right? You want it to be free. I've been doing photography for the last two years I refuse to take a check because I don't want anybody telling me when something has to be done how many pictures I have to edit right I don't want to bring that into that escape um, but it's that that my gifts times those passions that you are willing to monetize becomes the key for how you become super dangerous and good in your job got you
I love that. I love it. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.